I notice things and they make me laugh and then I usually like store them in the back of my head somewhere and then they end up on the stage. I think that uh, there was a point in time where where rap was pretty much like non-existent in Ohio. I actually grew up listening to pop music. It's the coolest thing in the entire universe. I love Ohio. I, I, I miss it. <laughs> Stomach started growling and he started slowing the way he was walking and taking smaller strides and you could tell something was definitely not right. All my stuff has literary elements too. We've gotten to such a phase where it's people can just say they're an artist. You know, wading through a sea of drunks, mm -hmm. trying to do the best he can for the band. Being in a room full of all your best friends, even if you don't know anybody, because you can sing and dance together and just have a really good time. If you don't know, you don't need to know, man. <laughs> Would you like to do a podcast? Like Gary or the guy of the room. You always want to make it into something, don't you? <laughs> Can't just hang out. <laughs> People complain that there's nothing to do here, but there is. You just have to go look for it. This is a nursery podcast. Go to thirdclass.net for music, bullskit.com for comedy. I'm Lee Boyle. Tim Smiley. I had an experience, um, I think it may have been in October of 2014. I had a person from my past come up to me and uh, attend a concert. It was me and my two friends, Peppy and Jack. They're playing a show as the band Third Class. A guy who I'd played street hockey with in middle school came to a show with another friend. Um, out of the blue, probably hadn't been to a show in 11 years, if ever a show. Came to the show, probably liked the music okay, but the, the motive seemed to be, hey, I want to catch up with people from my past, see what they're doing. And he kind of put off this vibe where he acted like he thought that we were doing well and he thought, and it seemed like he was going around looking at his classmates and sizing himself up comparatively. Sure. Everybody does that. Yeah, yeah. But you feel bad because you're Most like, that guy thinks I'm doing well. Most of us like, doing on Facebook, though. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And this guy had just gotten this awesome like pilot's license and done all this amazing stuff that I could never come close to. And he thought I was doing better than him. Everybody thinks that somebody, everybody else is doing better than themselves. Right. They all think that. Um, and then a few months go by. I, f I hear that this guy went out into the woods and shot himself in the head. And it was like I had this last interaction with him at our show yeah. when I hadn't talked to him for about 11 years uh, previously. Yeah. And I played that my reaction before that was street hawk yeah, with me and Pepe. Right. Um, and I was just like, this dude was like, <sighs> he didn't know it, but this dude was making his rounds and saying goodbye. And like, yeah. he was on his way out. And like, uh, do you even know? I think he may, may have. I don't know if he did or not. But uh, when when have you have you ever been around somebody and then you, it was their last moment? Not their last moment, but but um, close. Oh uh, yeah. Um, pause it. Yeah. Yeah. There's this kid I used to hang out at uh, truck stop, and we weren't like real close. We lived in the same house at one point. Because I, at one point, lived with the, who you would refer to as the everywhere guys, and they would call you that. We all lived in a house in uh, New we Waterford. We saw them everywhere. Right. We lived in a house in New Waterford, and uh, he lived in the basement, I remember, and I lived upstairs briefly. Um, I would see him around, and we would talk, but it got to... And this is very funny, because I don't feel... I'm not sad about it. I don't... Because you don't have to be sad about death necessarily we think we do I was at the gas station buying cigarettes and he was putting gas in his car and I didn't want him to see me so I hid mm -hmm. like a coward and then waited for him to leave and then I because I knew it would be a whole thing because last time I saw him somewhere he talked to me for like two hours Mm. as I was trying to go yeah. and I knew like I was trying to leave and he, he just kept going and, and, and then uh, oh a couple weeks later he uh, was in a car accident 
But he was stupid. He behaved recklessly all the time. He's mm-hmm. drunk and he's dead now. Mm-hmm. He had a kid and everything. And that's unfortunate. Um, and I kind of felt, I was like, wow, I avoided him and now I'll never see him again. And it wasn't like, uh, I don't know. That's as close. I think that's as close as I've ever gotten to somebody. Do you have that fake feeling where you felt, oh, if I had only reached out, you know, no, no, with anyone other than him, even? Or? Well, you know, my um, this is interesting. All of my grandparents are now dead. My mom, my dad's di- my dad's mother died before I was born. I was born in 1983. She died in 1981 or something. She had a stroke. I'm not. I don't know. Never met her. And then my mom's dad died first. He died in, like, 2005. And I remember that. I remember that because I didn't feel anything. I wasn't sad. And I was I was young. I was, like, 22, and I felt like I should be. But I couldn't. Like, it wasn't there because I didn't really know him. Yeah. I didn't know any of my grandparents. Like, I knew who they were, but he was always quiet. And we just I never had conversations. I wasn't close with any of them because they lived, you know... A distance away. Yeah. And in my 20s, obviously, I had a... I could have reached out, but they didn't either. So it was... Mm-hmm. Just because you were... I don't know. Like, you're related to somebody, and you're like, I should be close yeah. to them, and I should feel this. But I I didn't. But at the time, I didn't know that it was okay. Mm-hmm. So I remember I, I was laying in bed, and I was listening to Bright Eyes. Remember mm-hmm. that music? Because it was very sad. Yeah. And trying to feel something. And then I ended up writing... I ended up writing... Starting a novel... Mm-hmm. About it. and I turned every girl I dated to that point into one, and just wrote everything I felt about that. And it turns out it was just one chapter, and then I was done. And then I felt amazing, like I, like so much weight was gone. But I still didn't feel sad about my it grandfather. Led you to like like other things. Yeah, no, it was very cathartic. Yeah, but yeah. I still didn't feel any different about my about my grandfather's, my mom's dad. And then uh, my dad's dad died like three years ago. And then my mom's mom, the last one, hanging on. She died uh, this past June, mm-hmm. and I was at her funeral, and my sister and I sat there like making jokes. Mm. Not These people it. you didn't know very well. No, I mean they were just my parents' parents. I kind of knew them. Yeah, yeah, but they were just they weren't. We weren't close. I know some yeah. families are very very close. Yeah, we just weren't. Um, I don't think that's as uncommon as you think of a reaction, though. That's yeah, maybe weird. not. Like, maybe. There's a lot of people that aren't that close with their grandparents, even if they see them a lot. Yeah. And they... I'm not saying you would have cried otherwise, right. but they, they sound like a, a few of them made it a pretty long time in their lives. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. they yeah, died they when their, they were supposed to. Yeah, they were in their 80s. It was right. no tragedy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying that means Tim crying... To bright eyes over his grandparent if they died younger. No, right, right. No, but it, but it means like probably some peace of mind there. Sure, but like I don't know. It's it's weird for me because that means even though all my grandparents are dead, that means that no one that I was ever close to has died. Has yet. died. Do you remember that gal? She was in your class and she died in a car accident. In, we, when you were in school, she wore glasses. And there was a little tiny girl, and they were in an accident, and then this one died. Do you remember that? Uh, I think it was a, a class below me, but yeah. You know who I'm talking about, mm-hmm. though. She, she came to my graduation party. I remember this. Mm-hmm. And it turns out oh, she had this big crush on me or whatever, and she'd never said anything. And I guess as I found out later, somebody, her mom, told me, because I went to her thing, and I remember seeing her there in the thing, and uh, I remember this other kid, um, he had graduated before me, and this was several years, he had like a wife and kids, and he died in a car accident. He, um, I remember going to the funeral like everyone uh, for, of that social group that he was in in, in school mm-hmm. a bunch of people that just like smoked marijuana together and, yeah sure we were in the in the marching band and we were all like hey haven't seen you in mm-hmm. so long because why would we it's yeah. school's over we have no reason right. that everyone lives in different parts of the country but i still wasn't like close so i yeah, like yeah, death sure. yeah. death has not affected me negatively 
What were you about to say with the girl with the glasses and her mom? Her mom let you know what? That she had had like a this undying she said that to affection you. for Did me. Did you not know before? No, nah, I had no idea. That's interesting. Like, and that's why she had come to my graduation party when I didn't necessarily tell anybody about it. To speak to those more So younger. like, So there was this dead person. Yeah. Who had a crush on you. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and that shouldn't be weird because there's yeah. dead people all over the world that are dead. Mm. But like... That's odd. Did that did that get more of a reaction out of you than your grandparents? Maybe. I was gonna say. But it, I saw, I wasn't like. No, not close. No, no. no. <laughs> the, I, I remember my grandmother died in I want to say ninety nine or two thousand or something, and uh-huh. I took a walk in the woods and similarly tried to feel something and couldn't quite. Right. I was we're, a we're little tough. sad, but yeah. Um, the color we're born to mourn. Yeah, and then. Uh, then when uh, this kid wrapped his car around a tree, he was two grades younger than me. I had spent some time with him at a Lutheran church camp. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a little bit more sad because of that and didn't know him as well as my grandmother. Right. So it was interesting. It was like, I think the younger they die, the more of an effect it has sometimes. sometimes. Yeah. Not always. Right. I think there's a, it's like a X plus Y equals, you know, it's like the amount of time you've known them versus how many years they've been on the earth equals how much you miss them. You know, that kind yeah. of BS. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but. Yeah. Well, and then there's that kid that we both knew, uh, motorcycle. Mm-hmm. Um, Which was pretty tragic. It, a lot of people were upset. I didn't. Again, again with the music thing, that guy was at all the shows. Yeah, That's and he, right. he was one of those dudes that he was like, like a was football way guy. Too cool to be yeah. there. and he he kind of held a special place in my heart because he made a point to be like, I like you guys. Yeah, you guys are all right, you dorks, but I like. Yeah, you. yeah, like he led he so, lent you some sort of credibility, right. in that uh, uh, community. And we hung out with his girlfriend after for yeah. a while, and hung out with her, and she'd tell us stories about him. Yeah. So that, but and again, I didn't feel much. I didn't right. feel much until interacting with her, right, or going to the funeral. Because then that there's. But I didn't understand too. Yeah. I just didn't get that he actually died too. That was part of my numbness is that I didn't couldn't pro- process either. You know? Well, and I think that's the thing we don't we don't know what to do with it. Mm-hmm. Especially young. Yeah, when people like, are young. Yeah. Play bells ring, are you listening in the lane? Like Christmas, Snow is glistening. Um, when people are young, will you leave that in, please? Yeah, we have to. <laughs> we have to. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Like When people are very old and they die, we go, wow, they celebrate their life. Of course, it's no tragedy at 90 Whatever, you're dead, but when you're a young person and you die, people go, oh, I don't know what to... Mm. They weren't even close to being any sort of slight burden. Right. Like, like right. To, to and old me and, like, <laughs> right. the old people were. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a very good point. Yeah. I didn't think of that at all. And they're like, oh, they had their whole life ahead of them. And I said, well, now we'll never know. And that's fine. Now we can remember this person as this. And maybe that's why I don't get sad. Right. I go, you remember this person as this, as they were, when they were gone. That's why when I go to funerals, I don't look. When they have open caskets, I don't look, ever. Because I remember the last time I saw this person, because that gal that had a thing for... And I was at the... It was an open... But I didn't look. I no. just... I remembered her at my graduation party, and and that was the last time I saw her alive. Uh-huh. And that's how I'm going to remember her forever, because she's gone now. You know? Yeah. So that's my thing. That's what I do. That somebody recently um, died in a parking lot in Youngstown. I went to the funeral. Um, I heard about. I didn't at Christmas. all know yeah. that guy, but a lot of people. Mm-hmm. He was at show, He was at tons of shows of a lot of different bands. He like, was like was a super, thing, super like, fan. Yeah, super fan slash musician himself. Oh, for real? Yeah, and stuff like that. And so, um, I have to say, on the other side of the coin, it was a closed casket, and I, I wanted to see him. I, really, I, I like needed closure okay. in that way. Sure. I don't know if I've been that way for everyone who's died in my life, but I wanted to. That's weird. Well, has it always been an open casket before? When I've seen people. Well, yeah. Yeah. When you've got, well, very often. It really wasn't your choice. Very often. 
then. Um, I think I've become accustomed to like needing proof that they're dead. <laughs> right. Exactly. Isn't yeah, that yeah. weird? No, I, I can't. I just believe it. But yeah, like yeah, there many times there was an open casket. I had somebody I worked with die very suddenly, and uh, it was an open casket. And you know, my dad's was an open casket, and I was like nine. And yeah. There was a lot of stuff like that. So maybe just by default, I became someone who was like, "Show me the body." Yeah. Let me know this really happened. I yeah, need to yeah, go yeah, say yeah. goodbye to them, like in the movies. I right. need to go up to them, and I don't go up to them and talk, but I go look for a moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's a style that kind of became formed in me. I think. Right. Well, that's you know, that an early age. I saw my grandma as well. I saw everybody, man. I saw like almost everyone but this kid. Yeah, I went to one that it was. I saw the kid that shot himself. You know. Open. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, man, I need to see it. No, I mean, like, <laughs> it's weird. how do they... I don't know. Do they it was just, all right. Like, do they have him on his side? No. I don't That's know. Terrible. They covered him up. There was a kid that I went to... He was in my class. I remember this. He he was married, had some kids, whatever. He still lived in... He's Palestine. And then something happened. Again, we don't know the details of any... I don't know. I don't know, I don't know anyone's last moments. I really don't. I, it's, no, none of us do, and that's why it's intriguing. But he went to Beaver Falls, I think, and he was very depressed, and he was drinking or something. Basically, it was suicide by cop. He'd broken the law in some way, and the police were there, and he was very aggressive towards them. He had a weapon, and he, they shot him until he was dead. Wow. But that, there was intention. Mm-hmm. So I remember that. And I remember him. He threatened me several times in school because really? he was very close to this other kid. There was this, um, this boy that was disabled slightly mm-hmm. who was in the band. And he, he always was next to me because our, our names are very similar. And I never picked on him necessarily, but I don't know. I was, I was like, right, you're out here. You're That's a tangent I'm not going to go on. But anyway, he thought I was being negative towards this person and he threatened me several times Mm -hmm. and then he ended up getting shot to death by a policeman wow and i don't know i don't think i felt any way when was that oh not long after school okay because i i did want to say i was out in 01 you're out in 01 i did want to say the last two two the ones were that were more recent like the guy that shot himself and the guy who died in the Youngstown parking lot yeah. I did feel a lot more than I ever did when I was younger so I think age has something to do maybe, with it maybe yeah, yeah. I well, mean I definitely felt comes, more you know, perspective yeah. yeah I mean sometimes you don't really ever blame anybody for not crying at a funeral because there's numbness that sometimes lingers on. oh sure and, and then so, later they're yeah. in their car or something and they exactly, break down yeah. you know months later years uh, later maybe I don't yeah and we or react. it happens way before they die and stuff <laughs> right, that right, happens right. a lot yeah, I, yeah. Think. I remember losing it on the way to my friend's um, dad at his hospital. You know, I did, died, I cried like before the guy died. That's kind of weird. No, I get you know? it. Because yeah. I wasn't in shock yet. Making your yeah. yeah, I was like still like like uh, like alarmed from the, that it was happening. Yeah, you know what I mean. Then the shock comes later. Yeah. Well, this you know this is a funny story. My uncle, and again we weren't close. And it's not my he's married to my dad's sister. My uncle, but we weren't blood or whatever. And I don't know if that matters to people, but for some reason to me, I like to make that distinction. That, that, that plus their actual closeness to you. Right. You have to be really close for yeah, it yeah, to matter. Yeah. Right. And he, we, I grew up, you know, he's Palestine, Negley, that area. They lived in Youngstown mm-hmm. forever. Uh, my aunt, still alive, still lives in Youngstown. So... He worked in the mill. He was in his 70s. This was, he died in 2010, maybe? Not long ago. Uh, older guy. He was real fat. He was so fat. He was like 500 pounds. He was so big. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he was like very funny and he would always tell me dirty jokes when my dad would go to the restroom. He'd go, all right, you can't tell your dad this one. And then he would like sneak me Playboys <laughs> to take home because he knew that my parents were religious and he's yeah. like he he wanted me to have a healthy attitude towards sex yeah. or he was a pervert I don't know one yeah. of the two but he <laughs> wasn't doing well and we were all sure he was going to die and he was at the hospital and I went to see him and then we had this moment where he kind of gave me that deathbed encouragement here's how to live your life kid 
take my experiences and run with them. We had that. And I remember feeling like I cried. And he kind of, and like it was a thing because we weren't real close, but I was, we were in each other's lives. And I remember that and it was very special to me. And I'm like, I'll remember this forever. And then that bastard didn't die until two years later. <laughs> so like, but we had like, right? So we had yeah. this, this intense moment, like it, like in the movies. Because mm-hmm. everything I gauge on, if it's in a movie or not, he's somehow. Like, he's like, the one thing you need to know right. for the secret of life is. <laughs> right. And you're like, what? What? And he's what? like. He's like, just get as much tail as you possibly can right. before you die. Well, uh, no, I'm gonna was, live for two more years. <laughs> what, what he said was, you know, he said, he said, uh, find a, and he didn't. And this was very. This is a guy who said the N word a lot. Yeah. So that already tells you his background, where he's mm. from, worked in the mill, that sort of thing. So to be as progressive as he was with the statement of find a partner. Not find a wife, find a partner, find a person you connect with, and spend your life with them. And then he said, and stress will kill you. So see, I remember it. I'm going to remember it Whoa. forever. That's pretty cool, man. Right? But yeah. then he kept living, so he kind of it devalued the moment. And I, again, Did you have another moment? No, I actually, I tried Considered not... Considered him dead. I, right, I yeah. tried not to go and see him. I saw him one time after that. He's like, guess what? Stress is fine for you, and I want you to get, marry only a woman. Right. Don't let right. her be someone you can connect with. Right, because I didn't... I'd I, like you not to connect with anyone. I didn't want it to be ruined. No, no, I Because we had that deathbed moment, and then he turned out not to die. Sometimes people accept people's deaths way before they die. Yeah, oh, for sure, yeah. for sure. Like, that's, especially that's a person... Normal. In pain. Yeah. My doctor, my physician, recently, his his uh, his wife, young, she's 54, she had cancer. She died, and I went to the funeral, and, and he was he was not sad. He's very religious, and he said he prayed either make her better or let her go. And then she died. And then he said something like, she's not... I guess it's very painful. She's not in pain anymore, and she's you know, with the Lord and you know, yeah. that. But it's gotta um, be a relief at that point for I a while. Imagine so, because I guess yeah. it was years of just. And there probably was some weird plaguing. I, I know people don't mean to do this, but there were probably some plaguing questions where people tried to get him to overly define like, "What's wrong with you? You're a doctor. Well, Can't you fix that's this?" What I was gonna, yeah, know. I imagine that's very difficult as a physician to have yeah. a. a, a Spouse dying, and there's nothing you can do. Mm-hmm. Like that's your not, but that's your field now. And of wouldn't course, wouldn't you imagine it's through the people you know that would make it so much worse? Though, I imagine it like I would. I, so many people, even just in regular scenarios that don't involve you having to fix anything, ask the wrong questions. Yeah. I don't mean to. I right. do it. <laughs> you too. But I'm saying, like, if you know someone who just recently broke up or got together, you're like, well, I thought you guys weren't going to be blah, 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 blah. right. And you're like, oh god, like, I need insane. to just shut up. Yeah, yeah. You always like vomit the stuff out. Everyone, best people in the whole world, yeah. do it because there's nothing else to say. Well, you gotta say it because in your mind, and I do this all the time. I, I, no. When I'm going to a thing, I'm like, I'm going to see this person. What I'm going to say to them is, hey, I'm sorry that happened. I'm here. But that's never what I am saying. But in real say, you're like, how long until you're on the market again? You know, so, so you wouldn't say that. But I'm saying, yeah. you say something that implies, like, what's in the charts for the next tomorrow? And that's the last thing they want right. to think about, maybe. Right. But uh, that's that's off on and a little bit of a we joke thing. about things we're uncomfortable with. A lot of people are uncomfortable with death. Yes. Or emotion or... For, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Do you remember? I almost said the name. He's not dead. <laughs> right? No, he's not dead. So I was saying, remember Patrick Hecking? Yes. He, um, we thought he was going to die. Mm-hmm. He had like an aneurysm or something, stroke. That's right. Um, and I rem- and this was weird. He picked me up. We were in a play together. This was like sophomore year. We were in a play together. One act play. And he gave me a ride home. He gave me a ride home after that. And the next day at school, everyone's like, Pat had a stroke or whatever. And I'm like, because oh. I'm like, I'm the last person to see him. Oh, obviously, his family right. would have been. But like the f- last person at school. And he was fine. It was weird how fine. Like as we drove around, we had a cigarette uh-huh. together. And he had this neat little white car. Um, we drove, And he dropped me off. And then as far as I knew, then he like died. And of course, he didn't. You know, He's still around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, uh, got Facebook. He has everybody on Facebook. 
he uh, he called me uh, last year and he had an idea for a bull skit production. That's skit. awesome. Did and you it, do it? We didn't, but I want to say to him, if you're listening, Patrick, I liked your suggestion. It was kind of a newsroom suggestion. It was kind of like you guys should read like the East Palestine news and comment on it. So I hope that Patrick indirectly that we're doing you justice with this podcast because yeah, we hopefully. talk a lot about our small town in the podcast and kind of do humorous commentary on the fact that we grew up as these redneck people right. in, in regards. So I hope, Patrick, that we kind of took your idea and maybe took it in another direction that yeah. you still appreciate. And we're very happy that you didn't die, buddy. We're really happy you didn't die because he's actually he's kind of one of those guys that champions people like us in East Palestine. Like, right. He's kind of a cool guy that he supports is. like artistic people. And I remember this because he was out of school for a very long time and then he came back. Mm -hmm. And he was always like funny. Yeah. But when he came back, he knew... That none of the nothing he could do would get him in trouble because he had nearly died, and he would say the most outrageous. Yeah, and he was so funny, mm -hmm. and he got away with all of it. I know, Pat. Thank you for that. That, that was, was so cool, man. I heard some second that made my stories. senior year. Yeah, through my friend Derek and that stuff. I heard you. Oh, it was so funny. The stuff you'd say about teachers and yeah, stuff yeah. Oh, to their yeah. faces. Oh, I he, didn't know he said it to their oh, faces. Man, That's he even got, better. He got away with it. That was awesome. Holy crap, man. Yeah. All right, well, that's a pretty good segment on death. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, look, Mom. We're on a podcast. Make sure you guys check out the backlog of all the episodes on thirdclass.net and bullskit.com.